Hey, and welcome to the Headliner Podcast. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm joined today by Oliver. Hey, Nicholas. Hey. We've, hey. We've got a lot of really cool stuff to talk about today. So cool. Yeah. Um, starting off with something that I know we've been excited about in the office, which is our mobile app. That's right. It there's exists. A mobile, there's a mobile app. Yeah. We're not even supposed to be talking about this, Nicholas. Oh, really? I heard that uh, some of the people building it think it's like too early to be sharing it with the world, oh, but man. you know what? We're going rogue. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. You can get it in the iOS and the Android Google Play yeah. stores. And it essentially just allows you to take your videos and easily share them on uh, social media, any video you've created. And you can also create an automated workflow okay. from the mobile app as well. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's, it's exactly what you just said. Basically, we noticed how hard it is to get your videos onto Instagram from your phone. And by noticed, we mean we got thousands. We've had gotten thousands of emails from all of you. Yeah. And building off of that, I mean, I wouldn't have noticed it without the emails. It was the fact that there were a thousand that I was like, oh, yeah, this yeah, is a problem. At least a thousand. At yeah. least. Yeah. But yeah, basically, especially if you're on an iPhone, it's a lot easier to post now. You create your videos if you're making them manually on a browser, and then you can pull up your phone, grab your export, and share directly to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Yeah. You know, you get all the likes and favorites and retweets or whatever. That's right. So yeah, go check it out. Uh, you can search in the app stores for headliner video. Mm -hmm. And you just look for that little gradient with the H, and that is it. The mobile app everyone's been asking for is there. Yeah, exactly. Um, on top of that, you had something really cool that you worked on a few weeks ago that you wanted to talk about, didn't you? Yeah, so at the end of October, as you said, a few weeks ago, um, I published a post on Medium. Um, it's now up to 117 podcast marketing tips from podcasters just like you. So we put the call out um, for tips on how to market your podcast and got tons of responses. There's a lot of overlapping responses, uh, a lot of really similar stuff. A lot of unique things in there, and so... But, like, just just yeah. saying, all the repeated stuff and, like, you know, the multiple points that come up repeatedly, that's validation. That I just know. means it's good advice. It's good. What I was leading up to, it's good advice, is that, unfortunately, I couldn't pick everyone's advice, because a lot of it was really similar, so I apologize to the people who sent in the advice was very similar to other advice, and I couldn't pick it, but mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I'll be able to add that in to some other thing in the future. Um... But yeah, my favorite piece of advice on the entire list, I'm going to read out now, um, and I put it kind of big at the top, is from Brett Johnson of uh, the podcast Note to Future Me. He says, don't get overwhelmed by marketing tips. Every tip you read has worked for that particular person. Do what's comfortable. Do what you will do consistently. I think that's super important advice because there are a hundred and... 17 tips on here now. <laughs> I just added a couple more this morning. Um, <coughs> you know, I keep adding them in as they come. Uh, and so, you know, you're not going to be able to do all this stuff, but it's the post is more to kind of get get you started, get give you some ideas if you're kind of in a rut, or just to, like, kind of eavesdrop and see what other people are doing. Yeah, yeah. Building off of that, actually, my favorite piece of advice, it isn't, like, a singular post on it. It's just, like, the general consensus among a ton of these it's just the idea that, like, if you're doing a podcast, don't necessarily change your format just to fit some other need. You know, don't try and appeal to everybody. If you have a podcast about something that's relatively niche, maybe just own that and just target that niche demographic, you know? Yeah, I think there. I mean, there's a lot of advice in the list here uh, that comes right in that. There's basically, uh, exactly, uh, general <laughs> advice number 11 from Candace Carlton of the cubicle revolution do not try to reach everyone it will mean diluting your message and impact speak to one person observe them like crazy they will tell their friends yeah exactly exactly i think another one and i don't remember where it is but it was basically just telling you you know feel free to like send your podcast out to your family and stuff i know some people who have podcasts and they almost treat it like it's a secret right and it's like oh yeah i don't want to tell my parents because what if they think I'm just a crazy person talking into a microphone at night. <laughs> maybe like, well, you are, but maybe you're going to get famous doing that. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you'll be the next crazy alien conspiracy radio guy. Like, that's kind of awesome, if you ask me. So just, like, share it with everybody. 
if you share it with your inner circle and they like it, they're like they're going to be more likely to share it than some stranger on Twitter. Right. And from there, it's just a ripple effect of all of these people are going to share it. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with Headliner. The first people trying out Headliner were uh, friends, family, yeah, people that, you know, some podcasters we knew from uh, just from the world of podcasting or maybe just the, from the fact that I live in Brooklyn, <laughs> surrounded by podcasters. But it was. It's, it's always the friends and family first. Like, you yeah. know, that's where it all begins. Um, and I think the, the, the quote you might be kind of remembering is... Um, Number nine in the general advice column uh, from Brian Lofrumento. There it is. Of the Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. And, and his, his advice reads, people want to help you. They just need to know how they can help you. Mm-hmm. Most newer podcasters are afraid to tell their friends and family about their podcast. But those are the people who are most willing to help you out. Yeah, exactly. And especially if you're like starting out, there's just this whole idea. And this is number six in that general advice column by Ashley Mython from um, It Can't Be That Friggin' Hard. Surprisingly, it can be in my experience, but no, that's just it me. actually it can't. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my experience. It gotcha. can't be that hard, can it? That's usually me with everything. But she wrote in saying just to have fun, make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. And that was kind of going back to what I was saying about, you know, just not changing your format for some greater purpose or anything, just making sure you're putting out something that you're happy with, that you can, you know, get behind. And then people usually pick up on that just subconsciously, you know? You just have to be yourself. You know, I I, I think, like, we did the... I did that video with the eggplant. Oh, yeah, that's right. You remember that, right? Yeah. You remember having to fill me in the bathtub. You'll probably never forget that. (laughs) I was wearing pants. But, like, sometimes you just have to do the thing that is you and... I am pretty shy and introverted, but mm-hmm. I also like to perform. Yeah. And in my core, I am a used car salesman. <laughs> and I just had to let it out. And, you know, it's like, because it was authentic, it was like, bully, it was fun. And like, yeah. a lot of people responded very well to it. Exactly. It was fun. It was playful. It definitely stood out. You don't see that many startups deciding to do like a Billy Mays parody. Not really. Yeah, you know. But, like, that's, like, where I'm... I mean, you know, other people have done things that are serious. I'm, mm-hmm. like, I'm kind of goofy and weird. So that's just what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know? And my wife is not happy because she was kind of sick of living with that character. But that time is now <laughs> past. And I, we all move on. So... Yeah, exactly. I, I think definitely, like, like you were saying from Ashley Mython, have fun. If you enjoy what you do, others will, too. Yeah. Just like, you know, misery loves company. You know what? Happiness loves company, too. Happiness loves... I always like that quote, misery loves company, but I've always tried to reword it because I just hate the idea of focusing on that. I'm always like, solidarity is nice. You know, something like that. (laughs) Yeah, so that's the kind of... Yeah, so we've kind of got through some of the ones in the general category. I think another big theme uh, people wrote in was like, make sure to collaborate, right? Yeah. And that means not only collaborating with other podcasters, but also collaborating with local businesses, brands, and other organizations that might help you. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one on that list, actually, from Kara Mayer Robinson of the Really Famous podcast, it just goes as really famous, was um, brand partnerships with an organization that, you know, brand partnership uh, with an organization that has a similar audience. Cross-promote by mentioning them in your podcast intro and ask them to spotlight you in their newsletter. So it's kind of like... Find an organization that has overlap with your podcast and then see if you can kind of trade ads almost. Like yeah. you talk about them and then they'll share you to their newsletter or whatever's appropriate. I mm-hmm. think that's pretty smart because especially if your podcast is in a, a niche, which it probably is, um, being like kind of in that niche and uh, interacting with the people in that niche, even if they're not podcasters, can be huge mm-hmm. for growing your audience and even you know leading to... Uh, sponsorships and all that kind of stuff yeah no exactly i actually think i saw something to that effect i don't remember where it might have been during podcast movement at one of the panels but it was just the idea that like the like finding people to listen to your podcast a lot of people struggle to get people listening to podcasts in general Mm -hmm. and the main problem is that they're going on twitter and they're like hashtagging podcast and all these generic audio terms and it's like People clicking on these hashtags usually aren't doing it because they're trying to find something to listen to. They're doing it because they're sharing something that they made. So the whole idea of doing something kind of lateral, working with an audience that you might already have, or just doing a brand partnership, it makes a lot more sense because you're getting people who aren't looking for a podcast. They're just looking for content. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I think people kind of overthink it where it's like, we're not necessarily marketing a podcast. We're just, we're doing a show about some niche thing. So let's just find that audience, Mm -hmm. not just a podcaster. Yeah, and that's true. It's another big kind of stat that came out really recently is that in in the U.S. at least, um, only one third of Americans have listened to a podcast in the past month. That means that two Sounds thirds right. of Americans have it, right? So yeah. it's like that doesn't mean they don't want to listen to it. it. It most likely, I think, it means they just haven't found the right thing yet. And yeah. I, and I think people, like you're saying, they might not necessarily go out and find it, but if it's put right in front of them, they're going to listen to it and like it and subscribe and become fans of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's definitely good. Um, so yeah, the brand stuff in the collaboration was big. The other thing was about working with other podcasters, and one of my favorite kind of succinct ones was from Nate Dufort of Unspookable. Um, his his quote was uh, advice was show your fandom. We've had great success in amplifying the shows we love and having that favor return. So it's it's kind of it seems natural if you're a fan of something, just promote them, and then there's a good chance that the the you know the other show will kind of show you some love back. Yeah, exactly. There's a really like communal thing about podcasting in general, so it stands to reason that the more you engage with other podcasts, the more they're going to engage with you. And even just the way social media is structured, I mean, you can see what pages you follow on Instagram are liking, mm-hmm. and that is a way you might find new pages or new shows. Likewise, Twitter literally tells you whenever someone likes a post. So if you have a podcast and you like posts by a similar podcast, first off, they're going to take a look at your profile because I don't know about you, but I usually snoop when someone likes like two or three things at once from me. Yeah. But also his followers are going to be kind of like pinged to the fact that he's taking a look at your profile. Right. And that's just, again, that's just going to grow your community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about just all that's the social and social media, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> um, so the next kind of area, all about guests. So there's a lot of people wrote in about guests because guests uh, is a huge part of podcasts is having guests on your show. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this is like a really simple one, but it's also really kind of important to remember. It's from Desmore Semios from D Desmore Chats with Podcast or the De- the Desmore Chats with podcast or the I'm not sure how to pronounce it the Desmore <laughs> chats with podcast e- either way <clears throat> it's ask your podcast guests to promote their podcast episode with all their networks it's it sounds it's so simple but it's like just remember to ask your guests to promote their podcast to yeah. promote their episode be like hey you were on the, my episode can you share it out I mean there's a lot of other people have written in about things you can do to help by like you know providing them um where was it? Let me see. Someone, I remember reading, someone said, yeah, just send them your headliner videos for the <laughs> yeah. episode, you know? Yeah, yeah, someone said that. Um, where was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Phyllis Nichols wrote something. Phyllis Nichols of Sound Advice with Phyllis Nichols wrote, if you have guests on your podcast doing a landing page for their episode, it's a little extra work, but if they have a large audience, it's worth it. Yeah. They'll promote it and you'll get lots of new listeners. So it's kind of like going out there and making sure that... Um, you you've inter- interviewed this person and then make it super easy for them to go promote it too yeah. right like provide them with what they need yeah exactly and especially with the way social media is structured like if you're doing your half of it if you're making a post just a generic like a facebook post like hey i had such and such and such and such on my show here's a 30 second segment from it mm-hmm. you know just the act of posting that and tagging them is already putting that wheel in motion because then they don't need to write a post necessarily. They can literally just reshare your Facebook post or they can retweet your tweet. Or if you're doing an IG story, they can repost it. And that's that's like one click for them, you know? That's mm-hmm. not work. Right. No, yeah, it's easy. It's just like, can you copy and paste this? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so another area people wrote about was consistency. Mm-hmm. I always kept, for some reason, I kept thinking about fiber, whatever. Um <laughs> So, from Amanda and Shannon of the Pier 54 podcast, be consistent, release on the same day, same time. Fans rely on consistency. That's so true. I mean, like, as a huge podcast fan, uh, a lot of podcasts I listen to uh, come out every two weeks, right? Yeah. And um, when they don't come out, I'm always annoyed. I'm like, (laughs) you know, I'm either annoyed because I'm like, oh, I really wanted to listen to it. Or annoyed is the wrong word. I'm probably just, like, disappointed. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not mad at them. I get it. 
we, you know, speaking of consistency, we have a little consistency issues in our podcast because of uh, my improper use of Google Calendar. <laughs> um, but I'm usually disappointed if it's not there. That's like, I think for the podcaster, the, the fan that's disappointed is almost the best case because what often happens is I just forget the podcast exists. Yeah, you just kind of... And then it doesn't come up and I'm like, oh, I, I don't know, I moved on to something else, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? That's and basically... Then, yeah. That's what happened to me over the summer, actually, because I listened to two podcasts without... Well, I listen to three podcasts without fail every week. Yeah. If I Were You, which is Jake without and fail? <laughs> Yeah, without fail, meaning like... No, the I podcast don't. With that no, 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 no. Oh. I meant like without like I will actually listen to these every week. There is no way I'm missing them. Kind of. Gotcha. Um, the first one being yeah, it's if a I were you. podcast without fail. Oh wow, I didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah. There's a podcast for everything. Sorry, there no, is. It's fine. You can't even say a string of. You can't say two words in the English language at this point <laughs> and have it not be a podcast. I'm sorry. So Jake and Amir. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one podcast I listen to it every like Monday, kind of. Mm -hmm. They release on Mondays. If they don't release an episode for one reason or another, I literally don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. And then there's like other podcasts. That was podcasts. the day you, you shaved, probably. Yeah, that was the day I came in just came cleanly in shaved. And you were like, what changed? And I was like, they didn't upload an episode. <laughs> you just grabbed a razor and started hacking away at your beard. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like a, a facial hair Britney Spears moment. But, um... Yeah. I actually was listening to a podcast about that the other day. <laughs> yeah, I saw something about and that, it's actually. Wild. Yeah, that the, her security guards were, like, letting people um, film that, and wow. she didn't realize it was happening. I don't know. That's, Sorry. But, like, exactly. Like, the lack of consistency in posting, especially on, like, something that's serialized or something long-running where the, the habit's been built, where, like, someone knows, oh, Monday at 8 o'clock, there's a new episode. It is a weird way to break up the rhythm for your listener to not release yeah. something. Because what happens is this, right? If you expect, like, I expect, um, uh, I listen to um, Bill Burr's The Monday Morning Puck. Okay, yeah, that's a good show. It, yeah, it's like, you know, he, he, you know, I like him. I'm, I'm from New England. I really appreciate the angry Boston thing he's doing. Yeah. It reminds me of home. Um, <laughs> But so what what really happens is is like I don't think to myself, oh boy, Monday morning's coming along. Like yeah. I hope this podcast is out. It's more like I get on the train, I put my ear my um my earphones in, headphones, earphones, yeah. whatever they are called, and uh, if it's not there, I'm just like, oh man, like <laughs> I'm gonna listen to like last week's whatever I already listened to. Yeah, which I, you wouldn't actually ever do that. Oh, I've done that. You you've done that. Yeah, but how did you do that? In my case, so re-listening to episodes, the only show I do that for is um, Sam Jones. He's a photographer and director. He has a show called Off Camera. Mm. And every week he basically gets a different actor, musician, whoever, to just sit down and they just talk for an hour. So, like, it's kind of different because I'm going back. They're, like, talking about, like, method acting and, like, all of these topics. And I'm like, oh, I want to re-listen to this because I didn't fully understand it. Right. Or, you know, whatever. That makes sense. Yeah. If you're even you're trying to like Daniel Day Lewis yourself, yeah, exactly. If I'm trying to become Daniel Day Lewis, there's a good chance I need to listen to his interview three times. And then you'd become. How would you become a method actor? Um, first, you put yourself through a lot of torture. Yeah. Yeah, that usually helps. Um, second, you consider not doing that several times because I don't think it's actually worth it. No, I mean, like, if you were method acting, how would you method act to become Daniel Day Lewis? Oh, himself? how would I become Daniel? Um, because you wouldn't be him in There Will Be Blood or Gangs of New York <laughs> yeah, you'd be or Daniel Day Lewis. Foot or Last of the Mohicans or um, what's another great oh what's that last movie? one he was in from like two years I, I don't remember his last one yeah it was his last was one was he ever Batman <laughs> he should have been <laughs> oh my god it would have been so good yeah anyhow um, that was a stupid question no, I apologize <laughs> But yeah, no, no, but like stuff like that makes sense. I don't know, though. I think it's just the consistency is important, you know? It's also, I mean, this is like just the, I mean, this is for, this is like for life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yeah, that's just good advice. If you're going to like do something, just do it consistently. Yeah. Like for me, I like, I consistently overeat every day to make sure I keep my weight up so I'm never cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next section was, um. Not a lot about this, but a good number of people wrote about um, make sure your design and branding is good. Mm -hmm. One basic thing uh, from Aaron Verart of Sugarfly. Sugarfly. Make a good thumbnail that catches people's attention while they browse through podcasts. 
And I think that's important because it's like when you think about your art, right? So mm-hmm. your your cover art, it's like people think about where people are going to be consuming them, and yeah. what they're going to be doing. And it's like if it if the text is really small, for example, people won't be able to read it. Mm-hmm. So then, what's the point? Um, and it should stand out. It should be something where people look at it and they're like, "Oh, cool!" It's just it's just like album covers or something. Yeah, exactly. Which is also like, kind of no longer relevant. I <laughs> but, think it's relevant, but that's just me. I know, but you're like a young person that like you have a insane knowledge of. 70s, 80s, and 90s pop culture. Yeah, How old are I get you that. Um, I'm 24. You, yeah, you know more about when I grew up than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually gotten that multiple times, and I just kind of shrug about it. I'm like, yeah, I know. I was probably born with a Billy Joel album in my hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you predate and postdate me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but that's it's so true. Like, especially if you're going through the trouble to make custom artwork for every episode of your podcast, you may as well go the extra mile and really like you know, get some great art going for it. And it doesn't have to be completely original every time. Once you find a format that works, changing a few aspects of it every week is minimal work. It keeps you on brand and it's still going to engage people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if, you, if you're not a good designer, go find someone on like Upwork or Fiverr or yeah. ask your second cousin who took some summer classes in, in, uh, in design, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so another category... Um, kind of similar level of response to the design stuff is about email. So I think email is one of those things that it's not new, it's not exciting, but it actually works. So I think email is a big thing to, to use. So one of my favorite quotes was from Tony Lloyd of Social Entrepreneur. Email still rules. It's easy to scroll past a social media post, but email requires action, either deleting or reading. With the right subject line and preview text, people open emails. With the right email couple, copy, ugh. Line. <laughs> With the right email copy, people take action. And I think that's so true. Yeah, I really, I totally see the value in a well-placed email, especially because, first off, again, I'm 24. So, like, me actually checking my email is a relatively new thing, you know? It, it happened within mean? the last five years of, like, me actively actually caring about what's emailed to me. Oh, okay. Checking my personal email... I usually am just scrolling through things kind of passively, but if there's something, even though I know it might be an ad or it might be just promoting an episode of something, the right title, the right like preview text, that's going to grab me and that's going to make me actually read the full thing. Right. Even if I know there's a good chance I might not follow through, it could convert me. Right. That That's kind of the point I was getting at. Yeah, emails, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I've been... Yeah, emails, just, it's just insane. Yeah. That it's... It's used so heavily, and it's not really. It's since it's not new, it's not as exciting. But I still think it in it's worth really figuring out your strategy there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like an underrated, you know, marketing move in 2019. And so here we're getting into the the largest section of feedback and advice we got <coughs> was around social media. Mm -hmm. So I kind of split these up into general social advice and specific per platform. So it's like if it's specific to Facebook or YouTube, Instagram, whatever people are kind of talking about, I'd put that in one category and the other is just general. I think for the purpose of this discussion, we should just stick to the general advice um, because otherwise it just is too much. (laughs) Um, Let me see. Oh, here's a pretty good one. This is from... Aiden, I'm going to butcher your last name, Vulicolo, Stories Behind the Grind is his podcast, and he basically says to repurpose your content by creating templates for Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. When you release a new episode, instead of posting on one platform, you'll have multiple to post on. Great advice. That kind of goes back to what I was saying about getting like your custom artwork templatized if you can. It minimizes the amount of work you're doing. It makes it a really easy habit to keep up on. And then you're getting content out that looks good. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a perfect win. Um, there's also, I noticed a lot of people, I mean, you know, granted that this is people that for the most part are uh, using headliners. So a lot of people said make headliner videos, make audiograms, make like video trailers, all this stuff. But one thing, um, there was a lot of people saying go broad, like make sure you're on all the platforms. And then other mm-hmm. people, um, saying it's two ends of the spectrum. Caleb King from People in Tech saying master one social media platform and publish high quality content. 
And I think that kind of jibes with, um, you know, I think from my perspective, I think it makes sense to start out with one platform, get good at it, get comfortable with it, and then sure. move on to another one. Um, and, and then get comfortable with that, and then you have multiple um, ones going. Mm -hmm. Another advice, though, when you're starting out, which I think is interesting, is uh, from Terry Yuan of the Engendered podcast, is launch audiograms on different platforms simultaneously to text, test platform reach and effectiveness. So, you know, when you're even the process of picking a platform, like say you want to do Twitter, mm -hmm. say you're comfortable with Twitter because it's like what you know sure. from like you did Twitter you just think it's a fun platform mm -hmm. that's like that's gonna be good for you to start out with in some ways but you might be missing out other platforms that could actually perform better for your audience right yeah i know a lot of people get great response right now from um linkedin and pinterest for promoting their podcasts which are two kind of areas that i don't think have traditionally been thought about as the place to start but yeah it's definitely worth trying out different ones and, and testing and seeing what results you get yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, especially like with LinkedIn, because it is almost on paper. It sounds almost unconventional depending on your show format. But the fact that it's somewhat unconventional means there's probably less competition there. Yeah, 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 totally. So, yeah, another area that was um, a lot was about doing stuff in the real world, right? Like doing stuff. A lot of what we talk about is always in, you know, in today's world is all about like, what are we doing online? What are we doing with social media? Right. Yeah. But this is like real world. One of my favorite ones in the whole list. And maybe it's because I live near a farmer's market. That's every Saturday uh, <laughs> was from Rachel Wilkinson of Lifemancy. She says, attend farmer's markets and other local vendor events, find collaborative opportunities. You promote their wares while they introduce their customer to your show, i.e. cards on table, promoting you on their mailing list, etc. I think this is such a good idea. It's like it takes a little bit of work and it might not work for your audience, but if it does, it's it's cool. Like I um I worked in a farmers market uh, for a few years at a fish in New York City at a selling fish at like a fish stand. Oh, okay. And so like what we would kind of do is you'd get um your stand you could always buy like discounted fish right so mm -hmm. you would buy some fish that you knew like like a flounder or salmon or something that like you know other people want yeah and you go around the market and then you, instead of buying with the other vendors you could actually trade it <laughs> right like you'd go to the cheese yeah. guy i would go to the cheese guy and be like hey i have a pound i have a tuna steak over here like what do you want to do and then they'd like give me some like you know, chevre or something. Yeah, that's pretty old school. Like, hey, I'll give you these two salmons if you give me a live chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think, like, that kind of, like, it's fun because it's, like, different than, like, what we're used to. But it's mm -hmm. also, like, that kind of farmer's market thing is going on, right? So it's, like, yeah. if, you, if you're going with your podcast and your podcast, especially if it makes sense for, like, especially if it's, like, a food-related podcast or, like, it has something to do with, like, um, you know, crafting or clothing or whatever's going on there sustainability all the things that seem to be at farmers markets like there's a good chance that the people you meet there a the vendor is going to other farmers markets they're not just going to one a week most likely yeah so they can get you in front of other audiences and b it's it's just kind of a fun way to connect and exactly. you never know where your next listener is going to come from it's it's going back to that whole community thing like it's just going up to other people and the fact that you're doing it in person means you're actually like talking to this person and having a conversation about stuff mm -hmm. um and, like, I know a lot of people kind of are concerned that they'll just come off as really, like, annoying or begging. Like, they're begging for you to listen to the podcast or whatever. But I genuinely don't think that many people think of it like that. I mean, I was at the movies over the weekend, and I ended up having a conversation with a stranger who gave me his card for his theater troupe at the end of it. And I think that if I wasn't in a place where that kind of, like, com that was, like, community-specific already, I probably would have shrugged and been like, cool whatever but i was actually kind of like oh this is like this makes sense you know right because you're in the place that's like it's except it's like kind of like you're also like in a theater so it's like you like theater. yeah exactly <laughs> right. like it, it felt relevant and it right. felt like we had a conversation first he didn't just walk up to me on the street and go hey go see my theater troupe right right although i probably i'm a pushover so i might have gone if he'd done that too so <laughs> yeah, I don't like, know. okay fine. yeah sure i was i was on the way to the hospital to visit such and yeah i'll go <laughs> um another one uh for live stuff uh leverage events mm -hmm. uh oh and this is from jen fisher and amy fields of the work well podcast 
Leverage events. Whether you're attending a conference or hosting an event, use the opportunity to record podcasts on site with interesting attendees or event speakers. This is such a good idea, and it's something that, I mean, we've gone to a bunch of podcast conferences, um, and whenever we go, there's people doing yeah. just this. They're setting up their their mobile kind of podcast, like what we're doing right now with a, like a, a field recorder and two lav mics. They're doing stuff like that. Exactly. Setting up at a table and just recording people the whole weekend, and, and it's a great way to get out there, be seen, um, and get great content. So I think that's, that's a huge idea. Another thing... Um, Joni Deutsch from Amplifier uh, says, my word of wisdom, it's word of mouth. It's one of the best ways to encourage podcast listenership. Encourage your listeners to recommend the podcast to their friends and family. I think this is huge. Like, Word of mouth is actually the, still the number one way that people report having discovered podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, one of the, it, there's all kind of different takes of this, but... It's 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 definitely one of the largest ways that people find podcasts. Um, like for, I was having a lunch with a friend yesterday, and he recommended an awesome podcast that I had kind of heard of, but yeah. um, I hadn't I'd heard of it, but I was like I just hadn't checked it out. But it's uh, the Broken Record podcast with Malcolm Gladwell and Rick Rubin. Oh, okay. And he was like, you know, I was like I hadn't checked it out because there's just like there's I, by the time I learned about it, there was like a lot of episodes and. He's like, check out the Wildflowers one, the Tom Petty one. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's cool. So I listened to that, and I was like, this is great. And so now I recommended it to someone else I know who likes Tom well, Petty. I, right? Yeah, I, you also just brought it up to me, and I'm a Tom Petty fan, so right. I know what I'm listening to. I learned tonight. that Wildflowers was actually supposed to be a double album. Okay. And yeah. there's a whole other half of it that never got released. That's insane. It's just sitting there somewhere. It's just somewhere at, like, the Warner Brothers vault. Yeah, basically, wow. yeah. So it's like, but that's the kind of stuff that's interesting, because then, you know... Uh, but, uh, sorry, where I was going back to is uh, <laughs> just ask your listeners to, like, people might not think, oh, I should share this with someone. Yeah. Uh, yeah but if you just, people, like, remind them. It doesn't them. cross their mind. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's, like, I, I do think it's, like, if you say, hey, just, if you can listen, you can recommend us to your friends that might like it, that's great. Like, people will actually do it, because then when they see that friend, there'll be this little, like, breadcrumb in their brain that might trigger that says, like, oh... I re- when when the, when the host told me to recommend this podcast to a friend, sure. I, I thought of Jamie, and here's yeah. Jamie. So let me recommend this to Jamie. Like otherwise, they might not make all those connections because people are busy, they're distracted. They have no, cell exactly. Phones. No, that's that's a really good point. And yeah, the whole word of mouth thing. It's just personal, you know. Like yeah, I can watch an Instagram clip from a podcast and I might check it out. But if someone actively tells me to, and I respect that person and their opinion. I'm way more likely to actually check the show out at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Or if they say something insightful, you know, I think a lot of people forget that podcasts are information based. So if you find something out on a podcast and you share it in your day to day life, there's a good chance that you're going to follow up with, oh, yeah, I found that out on Song Exploder mm-hmm. or something, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, word of mouth. That's kind of classic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's classic. And so next section, people said it was all about kind of interacting with your audience. Mm-hmm. Um and so I thought this one was kind of funny. <laughs> it's from Mike Thomas of Inopsis. Know your audience. Like any hunter, know, it, know where they drink and feed, know their habits, what they are attracted to, what do they worry about, age, location, gender. Whether or not you like really want to know where they uh, drink and feed, <laughs> like, you know, probably not. But if you do think about it in terms of like, I really want to know this audience. Like, who yeah. are they? What are they doing? What are they like? And once you know that, I think it'll help you a lot in terms of what you create and how you reach them. Yeah. Um, another one from actually the person that helped I- inspire this post, uh, Jan Ilunga of the Podcaster Lab. Uh, when it comes to marketing your podcast, you should focus on two targets your current listeners and potential listeners, meaning those that may know little or nothing about your podcast. I think that's super important to remember that, like, yes, people subscribe to your podcast. They have all the context of who you are. They've listened to 20 episodes. Mm-hmm. But you have to always remember that since those two-thirds of, in the U.S. at least, and, and you know, uh, two-thirds of people haven't listened to a podcast in the past month, there's a good chance that someone brand new is going to come across, it could come across this episode. And in that moment, you kind of have to hook them too. So yeah. you have to make sure that they kind of know what you're all about and, and that uh, this is a podcast for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. I couldn't agree more. The next section was um, kind of like about things to do, make, or try. So 
One was, um, I thought was a pretty good one from Suchandrika Chakrabarti of Freelance Pod. Uh, enter podcast awards. Even if you're not nominated, the judges will now be aware of your work and have listened to some, and they tend to be influential people. So, like, enter awards even if you think you won't win, right? Yeah. Because you'll just be in front of the right people. Um, another one, Sean Tabbit of the Sean Tabbit Show. Do more video. I find the bulk of my new listeners, subscribers, find me via my solo and interview videos. I think that's huge. Obviously, we're here helping people make video. Um, but it really is true that like the world is very visual in terms of um, the internet. Yeah. So you have to be visual to be found. <laughs> no, exactly. And that kind of goes back to just like the reason headliners even a thing. Like podcasting is audio. You can't really share audio on social. Right. But you can share video. So you may as well turn your audio into video. Or if you have native video, you may as well throw some captions on that or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. A uh, few people wrote in about public relations. So uh, Jesse from Castworks Industries Podcast Network wrote, feature a press kit on your website showing best clips, audience FAQs, contact info, guest list, etc. I think that's good. If, if you're writing about a subject, that um, make it easy for a journalist to contact you and figure out what you're about. You might yep. be surprised at what happens and where you get written up. Um, some people wrote in about, uh, a number of people wrote in about search engine optimization. Um, so one good piece of advice here, I mean, there's a bunch of, it's all good advice, but, um, I like this one in particular, uh, Robin Good of DeBrand a friend is title your podcast posts as if they were articles or videos that need to rank inside Google, Google, <laughs> Google, <laughs> that's a whole nother search engine rank inside Google search results, avoid journalistic and ironic titles in favor of those that synthesize in a few words, the specific topic you are covering in your episode. Yeah. And then he writes, benefit, just like SEO, be increasingly found inside Google search engine page results on as Google itself has upped its antennas for scouting new podcasts, suggesting them in the results and offering even a playback platform. Yeah, exactly. And then building off of that, Lance Wantonar from Thinking Like a Genius, he basically says, if you can't transcribe your episodes due to cost, make sure you have a clear summary of your episode. This does two things. Allows for better SEO, makes your content searchable across Google and other search engines, and when your content is consistent with your topic, it increases page rank relevance distributed across social media. Building off of that, I think what's really good about having a really thorough show notes for your episode is, you could put in supplementary information, which one, gives a lot of context to your viewers. You know, if they don't fully know the topic you're talking about, you can give them the crash course on that. Two. That's SEO right there. You're not just putting keywords in. You're actually just giving information off. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. So what other ones do you see in there, Nicholas? Um, in the next section. Do you want to take on the next section? Well, I think... Isn't SEO the last one? Oh, it is. It is. Want more? Oh, man, I was just warming up. Yeah. <laughs> do we miss one? We missed one. Did we? Um, oh, I think go back to the things to do, make, or try. Mm -hmm. There are some other interesting things in there about, like, giveaways or... Now, let's see. Things to do, make, or try. Um, oh, here's a good one. It is incredibly beneficial to include a picture of your guest in your audiograms and other social posts. We found that people seem more inclined to interact with the post if they can put a face to the voice. It's by Elijah Longwell from the Tuesday Night Podcast. It's night with a K in it. Um, yeah, I mean, that just makes a lot of sense. And I actually think I said this on an earlier episode of the podcast, where just as people, we're kind of programmed to look at other faces and automatically relate to them. So for making posts and we have pictures of our guests, not only are we just marketing the fact that this person they've never seen before is on the show and they should check it out because that person's awesome, they also are just more drawn to the podcast in general because they're seeing a human face. Right. You know, and this is something that's backed up by like decades of psychological research. Yeah. The human face. The human face. Humans are actually very good at uh, just distinguishing different faces. It's one of our superpowers that we don't even realize. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like our, like, that's just kind of what makes us very unique anthropologically. Like, we do see faces and we recognize minute expressions in them. Right. And putting that in your social posts, just throwing a face there, means that 
somebody is making that engagement with that face. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, this has been good. Um, so yeah, that's a roundup. Thanks to everyone who sent in their marketing tips. Um, if anyone wants to go check out the full list, it's medium.com slash headliner video. That's uh, medium.com slash headliner video. You can find these tips there. Mm -hmm. And until next time, or is there anything else we talk about here? No, I think that's that's just about it for this week's headliner podcast. Yeah. Oh, there's one thing. Oh, what is it? Remember a, a couple podcasts ago, Bailey had asked about people sending her stuff to do. Oh yeah. And peop and and uh, it was suggested that she eat a hundred uh, hot wings, and so a, a lot, two weeks ago, uh, we went up to a bar in the Upper East Side of Manhattan that has a 35 or I can't remember it was like under 50 cents per wing yeah <laughs> and she made it through 30 wings pretty impressive and then her uh, entire body started swelling up from all the salt <laughs> and she looked like she was gonna be sick oh no <laughs> and so it stopped but she made a video and that's up on our YouTube so um, yep. YouTube yeah, uh, we're a headliner video on YouTube. Yeah, youtube.com slash headliner video. Yeah. Yeah, you can check that out. You could also check out the Chucky e. Wells video if you haven't already. You don't need to check out the Chucky e. no? Wells video. Oh, okay. It'll check you out. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, if you go to our uh, YouTube right now, there's some... Uh, there's some really exciting things for you to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. But yeah, that, that basically brings us to the end of this headliner podcast, guys. So... I think we have to take our own advice. If you enjoyed the show, if you got some value out of it, feel free to share it with, you know, a friend, a loved one, a dog, that cranky person down the street from you, whoever, you know. And yeah, that's And that's it, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. And we will be doing stickers again this year, so stay tuned for more on that. All right, awesome. 